break to break down the economics of all this, let's bring in Steve Moore. He's an economist for conservative super PAC Freedom Works and a former economic advisor to President Trump. Uh, take a look at this, Steve, from the Wall Street Journal. I'm going to pull this up for you there. Um, student loan forgiveness is really a bailout for woke higher ed. Mm. It will perpetuate the racket of selling degrees that aren't accompanied by marketable skills. So if we take this hypothetical as fact, right, how does that play out, this precise conundrum, Steve, in the broader economy? Why is it a problem? Great to be with you, Jillian. And by the way, you're right that Americans are opposed to this policy, but I would go beyond that. I, you know, I do a syndicated radio show every uh, Saturday on WABC, and we took callers for two hours. And people weren't just opposed. They were really angry about this, Jillian, because it, it people just think it's fundamentally unfair. It's un-American to basically punish people who did the right thing and repaid their loans and make them pay taxes for people who didn't. Now, the other element of this that people aren't talking about is what the Wall Street Journal covered in that uh, in that piece you were talking about, that the kind of co-conspirators in this crisis have been the universities themselves, Jillian. They have tripled their tuitions above inflation over the last 35 years. So basically what's happening here, Jillian, is the more money we put into the Pelper Grants program and these student loan programs, all the universities do to respond to it is raise their tuition. So it's like right. a, a dog chasing its tail. So what I think the solution should be, and, and maybe we could get a bipartisan consensus, if somebody goes to Stanford and they're making $125,000 a year, why isn't Stanford on the line for that unpaid loan rather than taxpayers? Quick follow-up, Steve. Um, yeah. Bernie Sanders, kind of mirroring the argument from progressives, says this levels the playing field or goes towards level leveling the playing field. And Republicans are really only upset right now because this helps the lower and middle class, um, and they tend to like to really only beef up the mm -hmm. upper classes. What do you say well, to that argument? Jillian, it's exactly the opposite of what Bernie Sanders is saying. What the, for, first of all, realize that half of the workers in America, Jillian, never went to college. And, you know, there are people who are, you know, uh, people who own small businesses oftentimes or people who work as uh, plumbers or electricians or construction workers. Now they've got to pay higher taxes for somebody who went to college and, and is often cases making $100,000 a year. So this is Robin Hood in reverse. It's actually taking money from people who didn't go to college and, and putting it behind the, uh, the people who, who didn't pay, repay their loans. By the way, one other quick point, Jillian. I believe if Biden does this and they forgive $500 billion of student debt, this is the death of the student loan program because no one is ever going to repay a student loan anymore. Why would you Why if would you know you? the government's going to come along and bail you out? So the whole program, de Democrats are killing the student loan program with this bailout. Um, let's talk about the IRS quick, Steve. Yep. Um, so part of the Inflation Reduction Act is going to be spent to beef up the, the organization. Republicans are frantically warning now about the dangers um, of this tax agency on steroids. The White House, though, is sticking to their original talking point. Take a listen. Do you think it's going to be popular when the 87,000 new employees hired by the IRS go around and start auditing people to pay for the Inflation Reduction Act? So it's very clear. Uh, the IRS commissioner was very clear on this. He said that on, on the record, that this only will it will only apply to those earning over four hundred thousand dollars. Carl Rove op-ed in the Wall Street Journal says the truth is buried behind some confusing language. He writes it's clear what the administration was saying: more households of all incomes will be audited, with each income group share of audits remaining roughly what it's been. More than ninety-five percent of all audits of individual returns have historically been of households earning less than $200,000. If the IRS honors its promise, that'll be 95% of the new audits. They, that's the key argument here, Steve, right? Mm -hmm. It's They're whether people who earn less than $400,000 are going to be subject to increasing audits. The White House says they are not, but they have not yet laid out the mechanism, right, by which they are going to guarantee that doesn't happen. They have not shared the details with us. 
Well, there was a way to guarantee that it wouldn't happen, because remember, Jillian, when this was debated in the, on the Senate floor, and there was a uh, amendment by Senator uh, Crapo, I believe he's from Idaho, a Republican senator, and he said, okay, let's have an amendment that says nobody who makes less than $400,000 will be audited with this new money. And here's the interesting thing, Jillian, every single Democrat, every one of them, from Bernie Sanders on down the line, all voted against that amendment. So they could have solved this problem, but they don't want to. Why? Because this is a middle class country, Julie, and the money is in the hands of the middle class. If you want to get more money, you want to get more feathers out of the chicken, you, you, you pluck them from the middle class. It's not just the middle class, though. People are forgetting what happened under Barack Obama, where, where we have, remember the name Lois Lerner. Not only are they going to go after middle class people, they are going to go after conservatives and Republicans. They will weaponize the IRS. This is not a conspiracy theory. They did it under Obama when conservative groups and Republican donors were targeted. And that's why a lot of us as conservatives are pretty nervous about this. By the way, I got audited under the uh, Obama administration. I don't know if that was a coincidence or not, but I think that's something to worry about, too. All right. Well, our hearts go out to you, Steve. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today. We appreciate it, as always. You too. Take care. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.